Hey everybody, welcome back to Thingy's Tech Talk, where we talk about all things tech. I'm Jeff Bromley. And I'm Rob Barra. And today we're going to talk to you about this week's Apple announcement. And we're going to talk to you about some of our highlights, some of our lowlights, some of the things that we think are awesome, and everything in between. There weren't really too many lowlights as far as I was concerned. It was, uh, it was a little too quick for that but uh, I mean they they released three main things uh, they, they've released the HomePod mini which is a new smart speaker quote-unquote uh, of course competing in that that marketplace with uh, the Amazon devices and the Google devices and all that other stuff mm-hmm. and also what and also uh, they announced uh, new iPhones so the iPhone 12 and its requisite uh, mini and pro version uh, were also announced and the big feature really is uh, 5g so they had the the CEO of Verizon there to talk about 5g and um, you know I, I think that that's really going to be a, a pretty interesting thing uh, we'll see exactly what the rollout looks like and how all of that goes I, I'm not sure if 5g is as prevalent as LTE was once LTE came to uh, the market uh, way back when remember on the the iPhone was it the five uh, was when LTE yeah. came along. Uh, so yeah, so it's it's been uh, it's been a while uh, since since all that happened. But let's yeah. qu- talk quickly about uh, the HomePod Mini first before we dive into the iPhone. Yeah, well, the HomePod Mini looks like the HomePod, but just in a smaller package. I mean, uh, I own the HomePod. It has phenomenal audio quality. Does not go as loud as I would like it to go. So I would anticipate that Apple is going to cap you to make sure that audio fidelity is awesome from volume zero to volume 100. Um, I suspect that they're still going to have the similar challenges of when you say, hey, Siri, you're you're watching your phone and your HomePod. Everything's going to all go off at the same time. So they're going to have those same exact challenges. But it is pretty cool that it can now recognize family members. So it'll know my voice versus Rob's voice versus my wife and everybody else. So it's going to be kind of cool to see how they're going to start making that work and play. I know that with Amazon's platform, they've started to allow family members in there. But it I don't know whether there's a switch you got to turn on or what, but it doesn't seem to be doing the most wonderful job when I ask it questions and differentiating yeah, family members. I know with uh, with mine, uh, mine has started uh, greeting my wife in the morning as Rob because normally <laughs> when you ask uh, what's the weather, it says good morning, Rob. Uh, it has stopped doing it for me and has started doing it for Jackie. But uh, I mean, to Jeff's point, the thing that's interesting the most for me is uh, is the uh, the new intercom feature. the uh, The announcement feature is something that we use heavily in my household uh, with Alexa. So it's something that I think that uh, if we were to go that route, I mean, essentially I have like probably 10 devices I would need to turn over. Uh, if we were to go that route, I would be interested in seeing how that works, uh, especially like how it rings phones and also goes into AirPods and things like that. But it's, uh, you know, again, we'll, we'll have to see the, uh, they, they, unless there's a price drop on the, uh, the old school home pods, uh, I don't think I would get the sound fidelity I would be looking for to replace my Sonos or things like that, that I currently have. Uh, and it certainly wouldn't replace the, uh, the, the 14 or 15 inch speakers I have, uh, on the floor here with my record player. But, uh, you know, it's, it's nice. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of home automation. I like talking to things and making them turn off. I like it being able to tell my lights to turn off. Uh, I don't have a house that's uh, new enough to have fancy locking doors. I think my door lock is from 1930 or something. But uh, <laughs> no, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how uh, how all that goes. Yeah, and and not to mention with the home home the whole home automation portion of it. Uh, I got to be honest with you. I'm trusting Apple and Apple's HomeKit a lot more than third party devices to uh, be on my home network and for things to be updated. You know, when it comes to my house, I'm trusting the big name brands. I'm not buying the off name stuff to be like, uh, do I really want this on my home network? Um, and, And it's going to be, and I've said this in the past, it's gonna be up to the developers to keep everything secure unless they decide to go Apple's route, which makes me feel a whole lot safer knowing that, all right, well, they're at least, they're going to be in Apple's level of security um, and pass their muster to be in my house and on my network and interacting with my other devices that I have on my network. So I, yeah. I kind of like mean, that. And I feel a little safer with Apple. That's certainly been one of the knocks on on Apple is that it's very difficult to get uh, that HomeKit, uh, that HomeKit uh, uh, 
acceptance. You know, there's there's quite a, a rigorous uptake to to get that level of certification. Uh, but again, it's you know when you when you think about things like your house and the connected devices that people are trying to to push on people, whether it's garage door openers or door locks or stuff like that, you know, it's it's kind of important to make sure that those things are secure so that some dude can't just like, Hey, you know, you know, open Jeff's garage door and then just waltz <laughs> into his house. Um, Amazon seems to want to let you do that to let them deliver packages. So they don't get jack, you know, jacked off your, uh, no. your front porch by the porch pirates. But uh, you know, I digress. Yeah. Anyway, enough of the, the home pod mini and home automation, all that good stuff. Let's talk a little bit about 5g. So Ooh. 5g, uh, does not give you coronavirus. Uh, 5g does not <laughs> cure cancer. Um, but 5g is, uh, going to do one thing spectacularly well. If you are a poor soul that is still using a metered data plan, don't upgrade. It will be done in about five seconds and it's going to be expensive. <laughs> Just don't. Yeah, when 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 all of a sudden you're streaming 4K Netflix down to your phone because there's well, four gigabits is what they said but, was going to be the max yeah. speed in some market. Four yeah. gigabits. Verizon and Cablevision in our area only have one gigabit to the home, so they're doing right. like four times that. So you know, just think about, hey, I want to download something. That is a that is an ocean of bandwidth. That's like an OC12 versus uh, ocean of bandwidth. So, uh, yeah. I don't think I don't think anyone still living uh, knows what an OC12 is, Jeff. They don't really <laughs> sell those anymore. Well, maybe just maybe they, fi- it's just fiber. <laughs> it's uh, just if you, for you old folks out there that remember what those things mean. Give us a hit a, a <laughs> high in the comments. Well, still, I mean, uh, well, the nice part of it about it is, yeah, well, with this 5G. Maybe, just maybe, they'll just say there's one data plan for all versus having 17 different data plans, one unlimited, this, that, and the other thing. They won't meter anymore because they have oodles and oodles and oodles of bandwidth. And it's just like, yeah, you're you're just a customer. It's pay $50 a month for Verizon Unlimited, but... Yeah, I mean, from a business model point of view, it's interesting to see uh, a couple of things that have been shaking out. Uh, one is, of course, the vertical integration of, of companies purchasing different networks and things like that. AT&T buying Time Warner, uh, you know, Comcast buying everybody, um, you know, and, and just kind of how they're going vertical to increase their revenues uh, rather than uh, continuing to increase prices. So if you have cable vision like Jeff and I do, they just continue to keep increasing prices and they don't really give you anything more for it. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how all that shakes out. But the thing from the announcement that I thought was interesting uh, or the most interesting and probably the most impactful once people actually get their stuff together and we can do these things again uh the whole stadium coverage and uh you know the 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 way that it's supposed to reduce uh the congestion and and have all that uh work a little bit better if anyone's ever gone to a hockey game or a football game or a basketball game and uh tried to do anything during the intermissions or timeouts on their phone forget about it but the yeah i want to text NFL... my friend my cool the the shot of where i'm yeah. sitting I, i'm like seventh row behind the right. behind the bench and yeah yep. they're and they might get it by the time you get to the parking lot after the game's yeah. over, uh, maybe. Mm-hmm. So we'll be interested. Uh, I'll be interested in seeing how that works out. And uh, also at the NFL partnership that they were talking about that Verizon has had uh, for quite some time, adding you know uh, some some additional views that you can have of the game while you're there will be uh, will be very cool. Uh, it'll help. Uh, I mean the. I feel bad for people like Jerry Jones that spent 80 gajillion dollars having a, a scoreboard the size of my house. Actually, probably the size of three of my houses, uh, <laughs> or my house three times, uh, just so that people could see things. Uh, and now we're going to have it all on our little phone. So we'll be watching our phone here instead of looking up there at the scoreboard instead of watching the game that's happening somewhere over there. I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. But enough about all that. Let's well, talk. Well, well, about... well one, la- one last thing I'm excited about with 5G. New iPhones. Yeah, I know. We'll get to that. But one last thing. They talk about 5G. Now, think about it if you're a musician, right? You're a musician. You want to play with other musicians over the internet. Ah, uh, yes. No I don't latency. know for a fact, but the latency might allow people who are remote, if everybody's on 5G, to actually collaborate in real time with music. I don't know whether it's going to be a thing, but musicians 
who have been all like, yeah, I'm playing by myself, and then I record a track and send it to my buddy, and then he records a track. This might actually get that whole music over the internet thing actually going. I don't know, but we will see. So, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine like a black metal band would be able to play their stuff together or like Dragon Force. Um, you know, I, I'd be interested in seeing if some of those guys could could play over over the Internet together. But I don't know. I, I mean, at some point uh, we have to get past all this coronavirus stuff and get out into the world again. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. enough about that. All right. Let's well, talk about well, iPhones. Yeah. We're already, iPhone, minutes, I, we're already 10 minutes into this business. Yes. And, well, the one the one nice thing about iPhones is uh, everybody will have a new toy for Christmas or some people have a new toy for Christmas. I know. Are I you getting one. a new are you getting a new toy for Christmas? Uh, Didn't you just I, get that phone? I, I I did just get that phone. However, you know I'm, I'm shooting. I'm still rocking the ten. Yeah, I, I'm. I, hey, listen, there hasn't been much of a reason to upgrade for you. You're like, yeah, it works. The camera works. Uh, night vision or whatever the heck they call the. I being don't able have to the shoot. night. I, I don't have the night mode. It's not on that. The, uh, it, the let me tell you, on the eleven, when you shoot at night, it is the pictures that come out are are jaw droppingly amazing. But the um, for my biggest thing, you know, we're shooting on video. I've done video for decades. The fact that you'll be able to record what? Hang on, I have it written down here somewhere. Um, what do they? What do they have? Uh, Dolby they have my... Vision HDR 4K at 40 at 60 frames per second. Yes, I guess you're finding it in my notes. But uh, yes. yeah, that's that's pretty crazy about the fact that. The Canon camera I'm shooting on, which was a couple thousand dollars, the lens was another couple thousand dollars. This is going to be able to do what a red camera is going to be able to do, which, you know, back in the day was astronomically expensive. Yeah, those things were like 10 grand, weren't they? Well, that body was just 10 grand. Then you had to get lenses. Right. And then, then you, you had, had to get, get storage. Lenses. And then you had to get everything well, else with I, it. I mean... I mean, let's sort of temper our expectations a little bit. Yes, you'll be able to take good shots. I, I can't imagine that the optics uh, of a regular SLR lens will uh, not continue to provide a higher rate of megapixels or, or you know detail, those kinds of things, apertures. You have a lot that you can get with that type of thing. But for the typical user, I mean, there's really no reason to not have anything else. Uh, yeah. You know, the concert videos that people are going to be uh, holding up while they're, you know, holding up their phones <laughs> instead of looking at the concert. Uh, those videos on YouTube will be much better. Uh, I like the supercuts, honestly, where people take all the videos that they can find. Uh, you know, you see this with like Pearl Jam uh, when they get to the tour. Uh, there's people that take the different clips from uh, from different people and then. Pearl Jam is always nice about releasing uh, an official bootleg uh, that actually sounds good. And then they just kind of mix it all together and wind up with a multicam, uh, but home, you know, essentially homegrown uh, video. It's not as good as the pro shot stuff, but at least it's a way to uh, to watch those kinds of shows. Yeah, but, so the, but it, these new videos, you'll be able to get that pro level because it's going to be recording independent slices of all of the information you need to make some amazing video. When I saw that, I was like blown away when when he was talking about his products. Yeah, but the average person is the, the average person is still going to be way too far away to get any sort of good yeah. quality close-up shots uh, mm -hmm. that you would be able to get if you had like a 400 millimeter lens or something true. like that on your, true, on true, your true. regular camera. So, I mean, the other thing aside from the photography, I mean, uh, the, like clockwork, new phone, spec bump, uh, new processor, new camera, all sorts of neat stuff. The the processors are continuing to get more and more powerful. Uh, mm -hmm. It's you know, it, it just is crazy what they've been able to do with their own system, with their own chip designs. Uh, we'll be seeing some of those chips in actual laptops before the end of the year, most likely. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see how all that shakes out over time in terms of power utilization and on all that kind of stuff, uh, how hot it gets. But there were other, a couple of other features that they were talking about. One was gaming. Uh, they were saying that you're going to have console quality gaming on, on a phone. Okay, fine. Which console? Uh, but you know, we'll see how that goes. It really, the, I find it difficult even using, uh, even using an external controller, because with iOS was 13 or 14, you got to be mm -hmm. able to use like a PlayStation or an Xbox controller and actually pair it with the device. Um, it's still too clunky to uh, to try and play most complicated games for me because I have yeah. big, you know, crazy fingers. Um, 
you know, my kids play Among Us and all that kind of stuff and find it very easy to play and move around. I when, find it very when difficult. Your, when your thumb covers, like, have the screen yeah, and that's the button, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. It's a problem. We're, yeah. It's a problem. That big it's thumbs a so we'll, are a problem. We'll, we'll see what happens with the gaming. The other thing that I thought was really interesting about the announcement was the MagSafe environment, I guess. So they've, uh, it seems like they're getting rid of the charging cords and, and charging blocks, and they're getting rid of the headphones and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, they're not dropping the price any, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, everybody doesn't use that stuff anyway, and we have all of them already if we're part of that ecosystem, so whatever. Yep. Uh, the MagSafe stuff looks pretty interesting. Um, it looks an awful lot like uh, the, the watch charger. I'm interested to see. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. it won't. But I'm, I'm interested in seeing if you can use a watch charger to charge your phone. Um, the magnetic cases and accessories I thought was interesting, especially the, uh, the little magnetic like travel wallet. I mean, so many people just carry their phone around uh, and, you know, throw a couple credit cards in their driver's license or whatever in that little slot. Uh, I'll be interested in seeing if uh, that thing demagnetizes your credit cards. I don't know. Seems like something someone should have thought about, but... You know, that's just the world we live in. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll what see. are your thoughts about that, Jeff? Um, I think it's interesting. You know, I think it's interesting that they want to make the phone the ubiquitous device. You, you don't need a purse anymore. Yeah. You don't need a wallet. They want to just put everything into here. I mean, with Apple Pay, you really don't even need a credit card. You just really need it's true your, your license, some form of identification, and you're off yeah, and you're I going. Hear I hear they're working on that too. Uh, that they want to have some some means of, of having uh, identification that that carry that you can carry with you on your phone. Again, I'll be interested in seeing um, what what happens with that with all the different security requirements. I would assume it's something that they would have to work out state by state. You know, uh, similar to uh, you know how most people use it for uh, you know plane tickets and stuff like that. I, yeah. I, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. Yeah, it'll but be, it will be it will be, really be nice. I mean, it, with the, what do they call Do they call them key, Kai? I forget how, whatever yes, the key. 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 I mean, I, I know on more than one occasion, I've put my phone on the charger. The little green light lights up, but it's like a little off center. I wake up in the morning, yeah. it's at 9%. So yeah. luckily I'm working from home. So I just come home, I go downstairs and I plug it in in my, uh, in my charger. So it's not a big deal. Or if I was in my car, my car play would charge it. But still, you know, a 9% first thing in the morning, you kind of need your phone to work, so yeah. I mean, and I'll be interested in seeing what they, what sort of innovations they can come up with with the magnetic cases and that functionality. Uh, I, I think that uh, having, you know, the the battery case uh, will be interesting. Uh, I mean, frankly, they were also making a big deal about the new glass and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, and the new, especially on the pro line, the stainless steel uh, casings and stuff like that. Honestly, I'm always going to put my phone inside of a case so when I inevitably no. throw it down the stairs, it doesn't no. break. No case. Yeah, no, no case, but crazy. if you do, but if you you do, have, if you also, you do look, you also have there, a giant a nice... scratch down the front of your screen. I know, it like slid off of my couch and hit the tile floor and I was like, "Oh, fudge." Yep. So, and I've yeah, had that and much. that happened like a month in. But the one thing, this is this is the one thing I'm super excited about. All of the old iPhones, super roundy corners, right? Makes it very difficult to hold in your hands. The old one, they're going back to the iPhone 5 style case where it's nice, squared, rounded, right. which if you put it in your hand, it actually grips. So the, this style right. is terrible design, terrible, horrible design. Um, <laughs> but the thing that the thing that I, well, hey, listen, I, I almost dropped one phone. I think it was, was it the six? And then after that, I had cases on my phone for years and I was always had my phone naked and people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, what? It's a phone and it's meant to not have a case on it. And I know you disagree with me on that, I but still. I disagree completely with you. <laughs> I have, uh, you know, not, not, yeah. I'm okay, fine, 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 fine. I, I, I mean, I can't tell you, I use the tempered glass uh, screen protectors on, on my, on my 10S and mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped it in my driveway or in a parking lot and it's hit a rock and it's shattered that tempered glass screen and it's a $2 screen protector yeah. instead of a $200 replacement. So Oh, it's um, more than that. They they've went up. They've went up. Oh, I'm sure with the, you know, with as much stuff as they're, you know, gluing to that screen, uh, I'm sure it goes up, especially with yeah. uh, their fancy ceramic business that they're doing with Corning. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I mean, yeah. most people I don't think honestly 
uh, will care too much about uh, the crazy glass and the four times and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to take a chance uh, on that. Um, I'm sure the day that it comes out, some idiot is going to buy the, uh, you know, the five of them and just start dropping them off of increasingly higher <laughs> bridges onto the ground below. Um, <laughs> I guess when you have 80,000 YouTube subscribers or a million yeah. YouTube subscribers, that's the kind of thing you can get paid to yep. do. Uh, us with our, at last glance, I don't know, how many do we have? 300. 300. They, you, guys, you guys don't pay us enough to, uh, to, to throw things <laughs> off the bridge. So... <laughs> And, and if you, all right, so, if you so, want to see that type of content here on Thingy's Tech Talk, please hit the like and subscribe button, share it with your friends, and <laughs> send your checks or money orders to. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here you want to know what my my biggest thing that I'm I'm happiest about? They are going to have a Pacific Blue case. Ooh, it's blue. It's, it looks it looks really. It almost looks like that that specific color that the BMW. Has that like bluish kind of? T it's a beautiful color car, beautiful color case. I know you're you're going. Again. Are you going gold, Rob? Are you going to go gold yeah, no. or the or the uh, green one? I will probably uh, go with the silver one or the dark or the gray one. Yeah. yeah so which I'm which one do you boring. have in stock? Silver or or space exactly. gray? I'll take whichever one of those. And and I will <laughs> invest all of my money in uh, my case, which will be what anybody yeah. sees anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Anyway, we're at uh, 22 minutes here. If you've watched the entire yeah. thing, congratulations. Um, yeah. If you have any questions or anything like that, let us know. I'm sure once we manage to uh, find all of the change in our couches, Jeff and I will be rocking shiny new iPhone 12s as soon as we possibly can. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. for this episode of Tech Talk, thank you for watching. I'm Rob Barra. And I'm Jeff Bromley. Stay safe out there and have a good day.